Hello YouTube. In this video, I want to share with you the classes that you will be taking as an electrical and computer engineering student. I will talk to you about the connection between classes ranging from math all the way to computer science. So enjoy. Before I attended university, I had this misconception that classes were a single road. You choose your career, you take the required classes, and you reach the end of the tunnel and get a job. In reality, it's not like that and the road begins to diverge early in your career. I'm specifically talking about electrical engineering, but this applies to other engineering disciplines. So let me show you how the classes begin to branch out in this map of the electrical engineering degree. When you begin your career, you have to take these so-called general education classes or GECs. These classes include subjects like art, culture, and history. These classes are required to give you an overview of different fields. The goal here is to create a well-rounded individual. So take advantage of these classes and take classes that interest you. After taking these classes, you should be able to take what is known as core classes. You will actually take core classes together with GECs, but I will separate them in this video for simplicity. So the most fundamental classes you will take will be your math and your physics. And this makes sense because by nature, mathematics is the most fundamental form of engineering. So be prepared to take calculus one, calculus two, calculus three, linear algebra, and differential equations. This will introduce you to all the mathematics that you will need for most of your engineering career and will form the foundational basis for the rest of your career. So pay attention. If you like these concepts and wanted to major in math, you will still have to take these classes, except you would have to dive into deeper concepts. My brother will make a video about the mathematics side, so stay tuned. After you complete some of your math courses, the next set of classes that you will take will be a minimum of three physics classes, mechanics, electricity and magnetism, and thermodynamics. These classes will be calculus based, so some of the concepts that you will learn in math class will be applied here. These classes will also introduce some of the engineering concepts at a very theoretical level. When I was in school, I noticed most students dropped out from engineering after taking the math and physics classes. But anyway, if you wanted to go deeper into physics, you will still have to take these classes to dive into deeper concepts. This deeper realm also includes more advanced mathematics, so be prepared for that. By the way, all engineering disciplines will at a minimum have to take all the physics and math classes mentioned. After completing physics, you will move to what I like to call real engineering. The classes where you will actually put things together and learn what you will be doing in industry. At this point, you will take the first electronics class where you will be introduced to DC and AC circuits and you will learn about basic circuit analysis. This class will use differential equations and linear algebra and this will be the first class where you will experience what I like to call the mathematics epiphany and you will begin to understand why advanced mathematics exists. It's quite beautiful. From this point, the road will begin to split. You will still have to take both paths at the beginning, but as you will soon realize, the two paths will start leading to different careers. Anyway, let's continue. If we take this path, we start getting into analog electronics and the foundation of electrical and computer engineering. So both degrees take this class. In this class, you will begin to learn about diodes, transistors, and basic amplifiers. This class is one of the most important when you will begin preparing for technical interviews, as most engineers will certainly ask you a transistor question. So make sure you understand the concepts. Now, if we take this path, you will start to head in the direction of digital electronics and computer engineering. This section will be digital fundamentals where you will learn about gates, binary, and some of the digital circuits like multiplexers, adders, and flip-flops. In this lab, you will also begin to build useful circuits like stoplights, and some companies will begin to hire interns if you really understand the concepts. Now, heading back to analog, if we head in this direction towards physics, you will encounter the electromagnetics class. This class will explore deeper concepts that you will learn in electricity and magnetism, but from an engineering perspective. You will explore Maxwell's equations for periodic waveforms as opposed to arbitrary, and you will study propagation of waves and the effects of wavelengths. You can think of this class as a meeting point between physics and electronics. If you continue in this path, you will encounter microwave engineering and antenna engineering. These fields will focus on deeper topics like reflections and penis matching and noise. Things that you normally don't see on normal circuits due to the size of the medium where the waves are traveling through. You will learn how to use a network analyzer, spectrum analyzer, and the smidger. 
Power also derives from the electromagnetics class, since power generation and transmission are heavily influenced by Maxwell's equations. In this class you will learn about the physics of power components like the transformer and you will get to use high power equipment. The power path can also be seen as a combination of physics and electronics, especially in power electronics. Both these concepts dive deeper, but you will need to get a master's degree if you wanted to focus on a specific field. Anyway, back to the topic. If you dive deeper into the digital path, you will begin to encounter microcontrollers, processors, and ARM assembly, as they are heavily influenced by digital systems. If you notice, these are the foundations for a computer, so computer engineering begins to appear. In this class, you will learn how to program hardware with assembly, and you will begin to learn about the architecture of modern computers. If we move deeper into the software side, programming languages like C begin to appear. These languages are low level and even work together with the ARM assembly. In this class, you will learn about basic algorithms, variable type sizes, bit operations, and pointers. This class also shows basic programming concepts like loops, conditional statements, and functions. Continue deeper into this path and you will begin to encounter computer science. Languages begin to be easier as you will see scripting languages such as Python. In this direction, you will dive deeper into core programming concepts like for loops, if statements, functions, and inheritance. Object-oriented languages are in this category and you will begin to deal more with data structures and applications as opposed to hardware. If you continue to dive deeper, you will start to head into computer science. But anyway, going back to assembly, we move deeper into the computer architecture side, you will begin to learn about digital system design. In this lab, you will learn how to program FPGAs and ASICs. You will learn about hardware design languages, where you will literally connect digital blocks together to make more complicated combinational and sequential circuits. The languages used are Verilog and VHDL. Continue deeper in this field and you will enter computer engineering. Going back, if we combined digital and analog, we start to take classes that will dive deeper into mixed signal electronics. You will design devices like analog to digital converters, digital to analog converters, and you will begin to explore connections between the digital and the analog world. You will learn about Fourier transforms, discrete Fourier transforms, and how most modern electronics work. Diving deeper into this field, you will begin to encounter communications electronics, where analog and digital, and digital to analog, are very fundamental concepts. Now, combining several dimension disciplines, you will have the option to enter into the realm of RF, where concepts include a combination of several disciplines. As an example, to understand a modern transceiver and how a signal from the air can turn into the picture you receive as a text message, you will need to combine everything you learned about analog, digital, communications, microwave antenna, and mixed signal. So if you're interested in the Internet of Things and 5G, then I highly recommend you take some RF classes. So hopefully this map give you an idea of the different paths within electrical engineering and how you can apply your talents to things that you are interested in. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching and subscribe for more videos.